Right. Let's over here. There's a bit of colour. Those can go away. I'm better off. Sweet, a bit of light. Ta da! Oh. Actually, let's put you maybe here or here. How do you think that is? Cool. Um, hi. My name's Dan. Uh, from, well, not from anything, Daniel Pritchard. Uh, Daniel Pritchard Photography. And my journey really through photography in general, um, why I got into it, some of the stories, the whole point of this is uh, to, to kind of explain some of the stories that I've had along my photography journey. And the reason why I'm actually doing this video is actually because I've just put on eBay uh, basically all of my equipment, um, all of my main part of my equipment. So I've got the camera body. That's actually not on eBay, <laughs> but I just had it here. Um, I'll explain why in a second, but uh, my lenses, that's my 24 to 70. <laughs> my uh, 70 200, and this is my 16 to 28, and they're all f point, f point 2.8 as well. So, yeah, and I just wanted to explain some of the stories that I had, and yeah, just kind of go through it. So, um, it all started really with my mum and uh, her love for photography. Um, she had a camera when I was younger. I basically wanted to pick something up. I was going through GCSEs and realised that our school, I think, was one of the first schools at the time to have a photography GCSE. So uh, she allowed me to borrow her camera, which was, I think, a Canon 550D, I think it was. Um, borrowed it, started taking photos. Obviously, probably rubbish photos. I might even have them still um, uh, coming up on screen. Um, but that was what really started me off my journey. And uh, going through school, I went from GCSE to A-level, did a photography A-level. Didn't really know what I wanted to do at the end of A-levels. So I did photography degree. I just said, you know what, it's, I'm just going to go to university and do a photography degree. I didn't know what sort of journey it would lead me down. So once I, uh, once I got into university... Um, I actually was kind of looking for photography work because at this point I've, I've got okay, like, you know, slightly above average, but nothing special um, in terms of photos. And uh, I, I was actually an ex-girlfriend of mine who I wasn't really speaking to at the time. She messaged me saying, just to let you know, there's a photographer's job going at this nightclub in, uh, it was in Tunbridge Wells. And I was like, oh, I don't, I've literally got zero experience. I was looking on YouTube for, you know, for, for, because it's, it's for how to do it basically. Um, because you have, if you imagine a nightclub, there is lights going everywhere. And uh, for photography, you need good light. And how are you supposed to react when you're taking so many photos of drunk people um, in a dark environment where lights going everywhere? What sort of lens are you going to need? What sort of settings are you going to want? And I was a bit overwhelmed, but I was like, well, I'm going to go for it. And uh, I got to the club and the guy thought that I was there to be a bar staff. Um, so I said, no, I'm going for the photographer's job. And he goes, oh. So he'd never seen my pictures. He goes, oh, when can you start? <laughs> so <laughs> so I, um, I just started. I think I started that weekend. Um, and uh, that was my first ever photographer's job. And I think I was getting paid. Uh, I think it was like... 55 pounds a night something like that um so it'd be a couple of hours it would be i think that one was maybe half 11 till two um in the morning and uh i learned so much in that first year of working at it was called belugas i was i learned so much there um all my photos at the beginning were horrendous i had the wrong flash i bought this is my um most current flash and uh, this, it really does matter what equipment you have. Um, the first ever flash I had was bought at Jessup's. Uh, 
Um, for those that remember Jessup's, uh, I think they shut down or was bought by uh, one of the dragons off Dragon's Den, I believe, and there might be one in um, London still. Um, but there was one in Tunbridge, which was my hometown at the time, and uh, it was a cheap flash. I think I bought it for £50. But the problem is with cheap flashes is that you, you can't keep firing it. If you fire, 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 it's just going to burn out and you won't be able to be, you get too hot inside. Um, the, the flashes won't be consistent. So what would happen is that I'd use it for half hour, bam, 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 and it would just stop working. And I'd need to wait for it to recharge itself um, for a solid minute or so, which in a club environment you can't do. You're going to have people coming up to you every second, kind of, can I have a photo, 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 tapping you on the shoulder, can I have a photo, mister? So having to wait a minute for the flash to recharge was absolutely pants. So um, this is one I had to, I, I was, I didn't really have a good job at the time. I think that obviously I was earning, you know, £55 a night from that, but I was working at co-op. Um, I think in a whole year I was earning £12,000, something stupid. Um, so to spend money on a flash like this was quite a large investment, but I'm glad I did because I needed it to do this job. And this was uh, at the time £220. And uh, what these flashes do are they are a lot faster at charging. I'm actually the Jessup's one. I remember now um, the when he was charging its flash, it would go. It was like whistle at you. And I was like, I thought it was going to explode. Um, but these flashes by Canon uh, were incredible. This is a 430EX2, and uh, this flash would charge into, into, uh, in, instantaneously, um, and it would be able to fire all night without any issues. Um, really, really good piece of kit. So that's that's going on eBay. Um, takes four batteries. Uh, I don't know what price I'm going to put up for, but it's going to go up for auction. So if you're interested, all the equipment I'm going to be showing you in this video, there's going to be a link in the description. So that is the flash. So the when I was doing my nightclub photography, there are certain pictures that um, that I loved so much, and it really encouraged me to kind of push and go further into the field. And the first ever photo that I remember taking, like, oh my god, this is this is such a good photo. I can't believe, like, it ignited something in, inside of me. So the first ever photo I remember taking was when I was climbing up Snowdon. In, uh, I was in year eight, so I think that was 2005, 2000, it was actually, no, it was 2006. And uh, this is this is the photo here, and that's the photo that kind of really pushed me to go through my through education with. And um, the second photo, when I was doing my nightclubbing, once I had gained quite a bit of experience um, at Belugas, I then wanted to go to the uh, the nicer club up the road, which was uh, Bar Fusion. And uh, I, I think th I knew that the owner owned Bar Fusion, also owned another club in Tunbridge. And I was there at Tunbridge, and I was very, very drunk at the time. And I was outside having a fag, and uh, one of my friends said, "Dan, this this is the owner for um, uh, Bar Fusion." And I looked him in the eyes, and I said, "Ali, I'm the best photographer ever." You're going to give me a job, please. And he was like, all right, mate, bugger, bugger off. Like, <laughs> it kind of, you know, just humoured me, I guess, having, you know, he deals with, like, so many drunk people. And, um, yeah, I think I got him. I think I must have messaged him or he messaged me a couple of days later, kind of offering me a job. So um, it was a little bit more money per hour. I think um, at the time I was... It was about £75 for a couple of hours. Um, I say a couple of hours with, it's about three hours worth of shooting, but the next day you have to edit. So going into Bar Fusion, I was very, very thankful. And uh, 
at Bar Fusion, one of the great things about working there, it was, I mean, the, firstly, the team were amazing. Shout out to everyone that worked at, at you know, at Bar Fusion. And uh, I, I'm going to tag you all. And I haven't seen you all in ages, but they're all absolute legends. Uh, I made a lot of kind of long, good, good, good friends working there. Um, but one of the great things that he only did was he got kind of celebrities in throughout the time I was there. So not only was I doing my job, but I was starting to photograph celebrities. So one's some great bookings that we got. Well, um, one of them was uh, Sigma. Sigma, just before uh, just before one of his larger songs come out, we got him. We had uh, uh, Pete, uh, Michael Andre, which is Pete Andre's uh, brother. He's a DJ. Uh, we had some people from Only Way's... Uh, only wears Chelsea, only wears Essex, kind of uh, C-class celebrities, but it was all really good experience. And um, the one picture that stood out in my mind was one I took of Sigma, and it's this picture here. And I absolutely love this photo. And I said, you know, this this is something I I, I think I'm good at. Um, I'm going to really push for kind of moving forward. And um, yeah, that's one of the one of the one of the key images that I got, and I believe that's what's with this lens. This is a, a seventy, um, a twenty four to seven, twenty four to seventy. Um, this is a kind of general use lens. Uh, kind of, it's it's good for everyday use. You kind of semi close to semi far. Um, if you're going out on a, you know, on a on a day trip somewhere, you take a lens like this because it's it's not too wide and it's not too telephoto. Uh, great lens, f point two eight. Um, moving forward to one of the other great experiences working at nightclubs was um, I really really wanted to go and photograph a festival. And I reached out to a, a festival called Social Festival, which was a Maidstone. And um, they didn't pay me, but I really wanted to go there for free. So I said, look, I'll go there for free. I want to get all the VIP passes um, and I'll give you the photos for free so you can use on your social media. The communication wasn't that good because I'm not sure if I got the right person who I was talking to. But anyways, I ended up going to this festival and I was waiting outside and the security wouldn't let me in because the guy had never sent me anything. He said, yeah, come along, come to, along to this festival, um, come in for free. But he never gave me like any pass or any details. So I got to the security gate and of course the security guard wouldn't let me in without a ticket because it's, you know. So I was trying to ring and call this guy, ring and call this guy. I had his name. I was telling the security, I have dealt with this person. He's given me access, blah, blah, blah. I, I was probably there for um, half hour um, before the guy on the security guards felt bad for me because I was literally waiting there for so long. And he goes off to some person, comes back and gives me a, a an all-access pass. So I went into this rave, basically. It was a massive, massive, massive tent. Um, the atmosphere was incredible. And then, you know, going to the normal bit, everyone's having fun, the lights and that were beautiful and I was taking all these, it was so easy to take gorgeous, gorgeous photos and I'm, I'm going to put loads up on the screen now. Uh, and then I got up behind, you know, chatting with all the staff and they were all friendly and I ended up going behind uh, the scenes and kind of taking all these incredible photos behind the DJ. I didn't know who any of the, the, the artists are because it was a house music festival and I am not into house, I actually hate house. Um, I don't I hate is a strong word, dislike it, but you know, it's still enjoyable. And uh, you know, taking photos of all these incredible artists and it was just it was such an amazing experience um to be able to do that. And I wish I did more of them. Um there was only kind of one other time that I went behind the scenes at uh, doing starting doing the nightclubs. A nightclub went to a better nightclub, went to festivals, and I started working at nightclubs. Um, around Kent, so that was really fun. Um, I also started doing weddings as well. So in my time, I've probably done about seven or eight weddings, and every wedding throughout, because I'd only do like maybe one, two, or three a year, and every wedding, every wedding would get 
um, better and better and better with time because you get used to dealing with people and you get used to the shots that are good. And of course, it's practice, practice, practice. And I'll be so thankful to one of my best friends. Um, their parents got married and uh, I think they were in the, the 40s. And they wasn't going to pay for a photographer, but they knew I started doing it. And they said, look, Dan, do you want to take photos of our wedding? And I said, yes, that'd be amazing. You know, this is this is my first wedding. I don't want to charge you. I'm not going to give you any, you know, don't don't pay me, basically, because I really don't know what I'm doing. And it's always, a lot of people said, don't do work for free. Free work is key. When you haven't got a clue what you're doing, why would you want to charge for someone? I would feel bad if I charged for, charged for someone for work and then the photos didn't come out how I wanted them to come out and how they wanted them to come out. I would feel horrendous. So I have actually done quite a bit of free work in my time. But it's paid off because guess what? This wedding I did for free. They ended up gifting, gifting me a hundred pounds, and that was a surprise. So really thankful for that. Thank you, um, Ronnie and uh, Perry. But that gave me the portfolio to be able to get the next wedding, and you know, along with the other photos that I've been taking throughout the years. And I'm actually going to put some of my um, some of the photos of some of the weddings that I've done. And I remember the first ever wedding that. I mean, I'd done a couple of weddings that were friends based. So um, I knew people at the wedding and they, you know, referred me work. And I remember two weddings that I photographed and they just saw my work on Facebook and I got work from them that way. And, you know, I, it was, I wasn't charging a hundred pounds. You know, I think my first wedding, I charged a couple of hundred, maybe two, three hundred. Um to one of the weddings charging 500 and these are really cheap you know any professional photographer now is charging a thousand pounds minimum and if i was to do a wedding now which obviously i can't um i would it would be a thousand pounds minimum but just because there's so much work behind it you know you have to keep all the photos backed up all the equipment is really expensive there's quite a lot of editing to do you know it's not including prints but uh i'm really really thankful for the weddings that i have done and in fact, the last wedding that I photographed was for my best friend's brother, and it was a gorgeous venue. It is, uh, and uh, the photos are on there, and these are some of the best wedding photos I've ever taken. Um, I actually photographed the brother's wedding uh, a couple of years before, um, and yeah, it was you know it, the the, fo the images speak for themselves, I think. And uh, kind of looking through them again, I did them a video. I think, um, yeah, I think it's, you know, speak for themselves, really, don't they? So, I mean, there's some of the stories that I've, uh, that I've had doing photography. Um, some other highlights were while going through nightclub, doing nightclub photography in Dartford, um, I was able to video and photograph um, some members of S Club 7, So that was really cool and I'll put up a clip or um, the photos of that event. Um, kind of looking through and, you know, I was I started doing uh, equestrian photography near the end and that actually was a big cash cow for me and I'm really appreciative of going there and, you know, being able to do it because the venue, the, ve the horse field was a charity event so all the money was going to this, the, I think it was a horse sanctuary or donkey sanctuary. And uh, I, again, had no experience with their questions. So I was just going to go there and see what happens. And they wanted a photographer for the event so they could put on social media. And they said, look, you can earn, earn money if you want to, um, but we just want a, a, a cut of it. So um, it was a bit weird. So <laughs> instead of them paying me, I would be paying them, which is absolutely fine, you know. So I went there um, to earn 10%. Um, they would take 10%, basically, I think it was. 
And uh, I think at my first event, I was handing out cards and I think I, I got like 150 pounds for the first day of taking these photos. And I mean, that was so much money to me. Um, I had to develop an entirely new website just so that it was easy for people to buy online. And um, it worked and the orders come through. I didn't have to print anything on my end. It was all printed at this third party. And uh, yeah, it was, you know, it, again, an incredible experience that I'm really thankful for. And uh, one of the reasons why I'm doing this video, again, is because I'm putting this stuff up for sale and I was kind of going through um, my all my photos and I'm 29 now. And so I, I was, you know, if we count it from when I started doing GCSEs, you know, uh, even if I was like 16, probably less than 15, 16, uh, you know, it's 20, 13 years of my life and I haven't actually done any photos in about two years. So a lot of this equipment has just been sitting under my bed for quite a long time and um, it made me realise that I do love event photography and I like kind of taking amazing pictures and hopefully you you know you agree that some of the photos are I you know I love them um especially when they're printed uh they they just pop and they have a different character um but unfortunately um my main camera body which is this which is a Canon 6D um I actually got this at university this is actually this was my main body camera um this was about a thousand pounds just uh, from brand new, um, but as died, I think a battery has exploded in the in the battery bay because it doesn't look well in there. It just doesn't turn on. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this has taken, I want to say close to a million or half a million photos. Um, I've taken a lot of pictures on it, a lot. Uh, it's going to be several hundreds of thousands of photos. It's, it's a lot. Um, this has come off. It's just a used camera. In fact, the camera that I'm on now, this is, I'm taking this on the iPhone, is probably better quality in some areas than this, than this camera. So they've got a second generation out. Um, and this was, I would say, entry level professional when it came out. So several years down the line, this is really outdated. So if I even if I was going to go back into photography, I want a new camera. And I don't know if I'd even go Canon anymore because there are some great players out there like Sony, where the autofocus is pinpoint. And um, yeah, this kind of just, you know, lenses hold their value really well. So I just kind of wanted to put all everything on eBay. But again, I just wanted to tell this story um, because I feel like for maybe a short while, this will be the end of my photography, um, my photography area. Um, and I just wanted to sit down, chat with you, show you some good photos and uh, reminisce. So thank you very much for watching. I don't know if you got to the end. Um, I don't know if this content is, is interesting. So, but I just thought I wanted to share. So thank you very much. Much love. And uh Maybe I'll see you soon. Hi. Hi, this is Editing Dan. Um, again, I want to thank you very much for getting to the end of the video. Um, just kind of going through the editing stages. Um, you can see all that. Um, uh, I had a little cry while I watched it. Uh, but I really want to say thank you to everyone that's hired me throughout the year. Um, there's some big shout outs. Amy, thank you. Um, again, Perry and Victoria, uh, Ronnie, um, who got me the first wedding. Thank you very much. Ali, uh, the owner of Bar Fusion and uh, SOS. Thank you very much for hiring me. Really appreciate it. Um, massive thank you to the Noble Jacks. Um, they're a band um, kind of near Brighton Way. If you haven't heard of Noble Jacks, recommend looking them on Spotify. They've probably hired me five or six times. I'm actually, the photos I've taken are on one of the, their album covers as well. So I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Um, do me a favor. If you see your picture in the video, then give it a thumbs up. If you see a picture of someone else, um, give them a tag. Um, really appreciate it. 
Um, and it, yeah, if you, if you, I don't really do these videos very often, but if you want to hear more stories, photography stories, you want to see more pictures, um, I don't know. If you like this sort of content, uh, I don't know why you would, um, then feel free to uh, let me know in the comments as well. Cool. Thanks, mate.